All right, good day everybody. My name is Rob Mazak here. I am a psychic medium and I do like to start out all my podcasts by talking about the way I do these podcasts just in case it's the first time you've actually heard me do one so that you understand where I'm coming from. So I, I usually start with a topic, an idea, and I just let it run and let it roll out. I don't practice anything. I don't write anything down. I don't read anything. I might read a paragraph tonight to support something. And so I just I don't script anything. I just want to talk from the heart, share some experiences of my own, share some experiences of my clients, and just talk about things that have happened in my life, things I've gotten through meditation and connection with the spiritual realm, whatever name you give that. I call it spiritual realm. It could be all kinds of things. Whatever lies with outside of us that brings us information or allows it to come in or streams it in or channels it or once again many words for that and so today i wanted to talk a little bit about signs to start out with i talk about signs a lot and i've done a lot of different talks that include signs from the other realms that comes from outside of us or seemingly so I mean, there could be a lot of descriptions as to where our information comes from. Regardless, it really, at face value, appears to be something that comes from without instead of within. Now, we may very well be born with everything that we need encoded in, in all of our DNA and our genes and, and our connection to the cosmic internet. I mean, there, there may be a lot there to discuss but for this talk, we're going to run on the assumption that everything comes from outside of us, through God, through the universe, through angels, spirit guides, spirit animals. I tend to use the word universe or spirit guides a lot. It just seems like the easiest way to describe the entities that I feel like I'm connecting with. Is that real? Who knows? Although I know that everything that I've gotten over the years, especially in the last 10 years or so, when I really started my journey, has been absolutely wonderful and spot on and very helpful and sometimes painful because we got to work on things and that's okay too because we're here to evolve and not to devolve. Anyway, what I was wanting to start with today on this particular podcast is I was talking to a friend of mine who recently we began to talk about these metaphysical things and it was it's been very interesting conversations and it, it's, it's a lot of fun to exchange information from other people to get ideas we were talking today about signs and the fact that he had gotten some very clear quote-unquote signs that he needed to do something very specific and so he said he was going to go off and do that. He's beginning to learn to trust these things. And that's one of the things that's difficult to do. I can tell you that. It's very difficult to trust things that we hear, feel, sense, gut feeling. I mean, there's, a, once again, lots of ways to describe that. You know, sometimes we know things. We don't know how we know things or why we know things. But the, the real trick, I think, is to actually put that stuff into action and use it appropriately and actually move forward because what i found for sure is that if you're not tracking not moving in the direction you should be why you know the reasons that you came here to have this human life and the reasons and the goals and the things you set out perhaps in contracts or or agreements before we came here that's a whole different topic but we're going to assume once again that we came here for a very specific reason not just for somebody's entertainment Listening to these little breadcrumbs and these little ideas that we get from outside of ourselves is very helpful because, you know, we don't know what the test is. We don't know what the, the plan is, really. I mean, we can come up with our own plans. It's very helpful if we begin to listen and to follow the path. And I can tell you that we're not going to get everything all at once. And, you know, as a human being, if we did, it would just it's probably shut us down. One of the things that we were talking about today was signs. As I just mentioned, he brought up something that I really 
I mean, I've thought about, and I know, I know it inherently within myself, but, you know, I don't really, I guess I really don't talk to people about it as much as I should. He brought up the fact that not everything that we experience in life is a sign. And I'm like, you know, that's a very good point. Now, I know that we are communicated with or we receive information every second of our day. And of course, not everything that we receive, you know, whether it's subconsciously, consciously, or however we process that within ourselves, is not always something that's going to be the breadcrumb or the sign that we're looking for to do something or that intuition. But, you know, I think to be here as a human being in this reality and you can break that reality down once again in all kinds of ways so whether it's a round earth floating <laughs> in through space uh, flat earth uh, enclosed earth simulation I think it would apply to all of that I think as a human being we have to have some type of background some type of invisible metaphysical energetic support to help our mind create and solidify our reality. So I think this goes back to the fact that we that not everything we see and experience is a sign. And I think that makes a lot of sense just because like my friend said, just because I see a bluebird out there doesn't mean that, you know, my father is trying to connect with me because I see a bluebird. Well, you know, you can take that however you like. And that makes a lot of sense too. You can go online and find spiritual or metaphysical analogies or ideas or descriptions of almost anything. Almost everything, I don't, I don't know how they do this or where they get it from, but almost everything that you can believe is a sign, you can find on the internet and track it back to something that resonates with you spiritually, metaphysically. And it's, it's not very difficult to do. So, yes, you can, in a lot of ways, misinterpret signs. Learning to understand signs and read signs and know when you should accept them and when you shouldn't accept them is, is a process. It's just like anything. Because almost, you know, when you start a metaphysical journey, a religious journey, or a self-development journey, you know, almost everything you see, you're, you're trying to decipher it and you're trying to think that, well, what are they trying to tell me? And... And perhaps that is the case. But sometimes we have to quit using our left brain and, and be a little more intuitive and just allow things to come in and allow things to show up. And if we start to notice it more often than once or twice and, you know, it becomes a routine thing, you know, maybe then we got to start making progress on that and start looking at deciphering that and researching it and doing all that. But I do think we have to be careful of not judging every single thing we we see or get as a sign from God or the universe that we need to be doing something different or changing something or becoming somebody else. I think you know where I'm going. And I do, though, believe that, once again, let's go back again to the, the whole being a human. I watched this movie a while back, and it's called The Island. And it's where... They had, uh, they were growing or cre they created clones and they were creating replacements for people that had a lot of money, celebrities, people that may need body parts later. You know, if they if their liver failed, they would have an exact match, a clone of, of them so that they could, you know, live longer, live healthier and blah, blah, blah and all that. And one of the things that really struck me about this movie was not so much that, but what they discovered in, in the initial cloning of these people that the clones would not survive and they would die off if they didn't have any background or any memories or anything to draw their experience on as a human being so what they had to do was start inserting memories even if they were not real riding a, a red bike with with tassels you know or you know going to eat lunch with grandma every day and they ran, you know, 10 or 12 different scenarios, I think, in the movie. But then they found that these, these clones would, would manage to survive because it had something to base the processing of our, of our mind, putting our reality together so that we could actually 
have an appropriate experience. And so I think that makes sense that we're, we're getting 11 million bits of information per second into our bombarding our mind and our conscious mind can only handle a little bit of that. But all of it goes in and I don't think it's all signs. I think parts of it can be. I think that's just our background. Our, I guess if you look at it like a computer, it's you know something that's processing in the background that keeps everything stable, keeps everything, it keeps the environment of the computer where it should be in a balance and, and goes back to, to where it where in reset, sorry, resets and all that. You can see sometimes these things are a little hard to, to figure out how to say in words. But I think you understand where I'm going here is that signs are very important and I do believe that. And I talked about this in the last podcast. You know, we don't always get that big, huge billboard sign. I believe in my mind that if we get, if we really get that really big, glowing billboard sign i think it's more of a sign that we've just been too ignorant to the little bitty breadcrumb signs that have been given to us and i do think that focusing on signs is important but at the same time i don't think it's everything so once again this kind of goes back to having balance in our life what i'm trying to say is if you're seeing repeating patterns repeating patterns repeating patterns I think it's time to pay attention and sometimes it can be just a few times sometimes it's you know more than that but I don't want everybody to focus on the fact that everything is all coming from external and everything is a sign I think that's the wrong, wrong way to approach it and so I wanted to talk about that because that was a really interesting concept so you learn stuff from everybody it doesn't matter who you are or where you're on your journey everybody that you talk to brings up something that you can really learn from. And I think that's an important aspect to to think about. The other thing this this individual brought up that was interesting is he said he's had a lot of, um, I think he was alluding to having other readers or other people trying to tell him that his dad has been trying to contact him, his, his dad who has passed. And he said, you know, it's funny because he's been, He's been gone for a, a lot of years. You know, I've, I've not gotten anything from him, dreams or anything. And I can relate to that experience because as, as much as I'm able to connect with those that have passed on, we can circle back on that in a minute about what that may or may not be. But the, the fact that I can process that and never hear from my father for I think it was three or four years after he passed didn't get a peep and me and my dad were very close and we were very we were like friends right he was one of, one of my best friends and I just never I never heard anything from him when he passed but when he did show up he came in booming he really did I don't think that everybody that passes from this world to the next Whatever that is, there's a lot of ideas there. Once again, another topic, another whole podcast or two or three on that one. One of the things that my mentor brought up in uh, my learning process was that when we pass on to the other realms, we when we die, we become un, unalive, I guess is the political word, that we actually have things to do on the other side as well it's like having a new life or a new thing or a new process and if past life regressions i'm sorry past lives and reincarnation is accurate which i do believe it is i mean there's just too much evidence for me when we go to that life between lives we leave this life which we all will before we choose or have another life chosen for us to embody or experience, there's a, a place where you need to go and reset, re- you know, evaluate the life that you just had to see if you, in fact, learned the lessons you came to learn or repaid the karma you, you came to pay. I think you get my point. In the religious texts, it's it's a place um, with Catholics like to call purgatory. Well, it's not heaven, it's not hell, which 
yeah, those I'm not sure if actually exist or not, but regardless, the little place between heaven and hell where you're not really alive, but you're not really dead, and that you have things to do there. You have to go over the life you've had. Once again, assess. You know, Do you need to go back and perhaps do it again? You didn't actually process or learn the things that you went there to do and experience the things you were supposed to experience. They're not all good, by the way. Sometimes you go to be the bad guy. Sometimes you go to be the good guy. Sometimes you get a reward life. There's a lot of different things that can happen. Once again, I don't know that everybody that's on the other side or every entity, I guess it's not a body. Well, I'm using that term loosely, but you get my point that those that are on the other side are not always trying to reach back out to their quote-unquote loved ones or not-so-loved ones. Not everybody parts this place on really good terms but the thing is that they don't necessarily always need us I think we need them more than we than they need us although there are occasions where I have discovered entities or those that have passed from this world into that space that we just talked about they are ultimately stuck there they can't quite get to return to the source they can't they can't quite reunite with god or the creator but they can't come here and it's like they get put in this place or stuck in this place like a almost like a glass prison where they can see where they need to go they can see where they've been but they can't necessarily escape because they're so connected here for various reasons and that i've talked about that in other podcasts in, in those cases, there are those energies, or entities that are stuck, so to speak, that need reconciliation or they're very connected to someone who's still living here on this earth or this place and they can't seem to be disconnected. And those people will communicate quite a bit. The dining facility on the camp where I work is very much a place that is connected with someone like that. And I've spoken to that entity many times, and that, that's where I really learned what I was just talking about. Can't prove all that, of course, people. You know, take this as gospel or truth, or that I'm trying to say things are true when I can't, there's no way I could actually prove that to you. I'm just talking about my experiences and what I've received and what I've experienced And so I share these things as experiences because I hope that I can help other people that are having similar things feel somewhat, quote unquote, normal, and that it's not really strange. I mean, it is strange, I guess, if you're trying to fit into the model of our society. It it is absolutely normal to, to connect with these things and these people. Like I said, you know, you have to really... I think it is is an imperative that you pay attention to all those things around you. Over time, you'll learn to discern what are really signs, what are really what is really information that you need to do something, really be something that's moving you forward, you know, and and giving you specific direction. But those things that really stand out, you will know them after you've been working in this particular metaphysical environment over time. You will be able to discern what is just background and what is actually, oh man, I need to do something with that. I need to pay attention to that. So like, I'll give you an example, a recent example. I had a dream the other night which is where a lot of information comes through, especially when you're not doing it on purpose in meditation or mindfulness or whatever. There was a sequence of numbers that played in my dreams all night long, or at least seemingly. Because dreams can feel like they're really long when they're really not. They could be, you know, minutes. 
we feel like it's eight hours worth. But the numbers were 2876, 2876. I, I like to hold on to information like this because eventually what I find is that even if it's if it's not something that is manifesting now or is relevant now, it will soon be or it will be in time. I've given those examples before where stuff has come through that didn't make sense for years. We have to remember though that if we are receiving information from the spiritual realm or other dimensions or other realms, remember that time is different or not relevant at all. So when entities from the spiritual realm, for example, are communicating with us, there is no time there. There's no past, there's no present, there's no now, there's just everything happens all at the same time, past, present, future. It all is just one big, I don't even know how to describe it, because I've been there in my own meditation journeys, and many of my clients have been there through hypnosis and regressions and things like that, and the way they describe it is that they can't describe it. And so when we get information from this realm, a lot of times it, the timing doesn't make sense to us. But to those on in that realm, it, it, it makes absolute sense because they, when they have the information, it's not based on time. Here we are limited and bound to time. I wanted to read the summary of off of uh, astrology.com of the numbers 2876. And for me, it really uh, it made sense for me. And that's that's what I like about researching signs because you can find lots and lots of definitions and descriptions of symbology that you might have in dreams or in, in meditation or things that you've noticed or exact phrases, uh, numbers, all of that. And you just have to figure out which one of those resonates with you. And you'll know. You'll absolutely know. And this will help you develop a language of sorts with the other realm where this information comes through. So let me read this to you. In summary, the number 2876 carries a powerful message related to balance, harmony, abundance, and spirituality. It encourages you to align with your higher purpose, trust in the divine guidance, and manifest your dreams. This number reminds you of the importance of family, love, and nurturing relationships. Stay connected to your intuition, focus on spiritual growth, and embrace the abundance that awaits you. The balance of the energy of 2876 and watch as your life unfolds in a harmonious and fulfilling way. And for me, without getting into super specifics, that message hits very close to home. And it, it reminds me that I need to keep doing what I'm doing, even though I have a regular job and it, it, it takes me away from doing a lot of the things that I like to do. I do a lot of cool things, in, well, cool things in my opinion. It's hard to get those things done sometimes with the amount of hours you work and you know, how tired you are at the end of the day. To remind me that I still have a mission outside of my job, outside of everything else, I still have this as a mission. I've been given this to do these things rather to do. To me, it's a solid message and a sign, quote unquote, that I need to continue down this path. Once again, though, I think that we have to pay attention to everything in our life. I, I think you really do. Not just looking for signs, not just looking for relevance or meaning, but also connecting with people, connecting with people and, and learning from everybody. Because just a couple of things that we talked about today with my new friend and I, that really reminded me that, you know, some of my messaging that's going out maybe have confused people that, you know, everything is a sign. And I've said, I've said things like that or similar to that, that, you know, we're, we're learning every second of the day and we're getting bombarded with information. His comment helped to me realize that 
Oh, yeah, you're right. We're, we're not necessarily getting everything in a sign every second of the day, which is, is kind of good to know. But I just wanted to say that, you know, stay, stay true to who you are and why you're here and what it is that you're supposed to be doing. You know, we all know that that feeling when we're doing the things we're supposed to be doing and, and the feeling we get when we're doing the things we're not supposed to be doing. Stay the course. Actually pay attention. Listen. Discern. Practice. Get good at understanding what's coming through. Get good at understanding what's being presented to you in life. And it takes time. It really does. To learn a skill, to learn to master the intuitive connection between you and your creator, the source, the other realms, however you decide to interpret that, you have to put the time in. You have to center yourself. You have to quiet your mind. You have to be able to allow things to flow into your consciousness so that you can learn to process that to learn the language to learn how to speak the language to understand the language to understand the symbology the meanings common meanings things like that and i encourage you guys to do that it takes practice it takes time it takes dedication put it on your calendar because then perhaps maybe you'll be more likely to do it we can't just go through life and expect to be granted signs and just given things we have to work for them. We have to be in alignment with them. We have to actually connect with our purpose and our creator, whoever you believe that is. It's different for everybody. I feel like it's the same diamond we're looking at, but everybody has a different name. That's just my opinion. I have a website that I would like you to go to. It's lifebymazak.com, L-I-F-E-B-Y-M-A-Z-A-K.com. And find my contact page. You know, if, if you'll reach out to me, I would really like to collaborate and, and discuss these things with other people as well. I mean, I, I learn from everybody as much as I'm helping other people learn through my experiences. And I, I want us all to come together and actually join forces and so we can all learn and grow at a much faster rate. So I will speak to you guys again most assuredly. I look forward to hearing from you guys. Stay strong and live your life.